Uh, for last 50 years, cities all over the world are trying to become sustainable and uh, it's not exactly a very uh, easy journey. Uh, to start with, uh, we work on matters of fields of energy, uh, mobility, construction and of course temperature control. These four aspects are something which uh, consume most of the energy and create most of the carbon footprint. And therefore, steps are to be taken for controlling the temperature. One example we tried was the district cooling system in which instead of having individual air conditioners in home, an entire housing society or complex can have a central air cool system and that's way of a very efficient way of controlling the temperature. In, in matters of energy, uh, rooftop solar and hybrid so wind solar at home with net metering has been a very successful example. Uh, Orange uh, City uh, in Pune has been acknowledged as one of the important uh, examples of having a uh, very efficient energy use for uh, any green building framework. In matter of constructions, again, I think uh, the Griha uh, parameters in which uh, a proper way of uh, marking, standardizing and certification of green buildings is a new concept which I think is being used by many of the uh, cities. And of course, on mobility, more and more of electric public mobility is a way to be become sustainable. If we are just going to replace uh, internal combustion engines with electric motors, that's not exactly going to solve the problem of tra traffic woes. You'll only have uh, traffic jams with electrical vehicles. So we will have to move for uh, traffic, we'll have to move for electric mobility and that too of public transport. So I think these are the steps that are being taken in many cities in India. And we hope that the, the impact that the cities are creating on environment uh, will be lessened, it will be less intensive and also uh, we would be giving the life, uh, a good life for the citizens. I think uh, first is the change of mindset which is required that there is nothing called waste, each and everything is a resource and therefore it is not something that you have to get rid of. Once you take this mindset that this is a resource, it is to be mined, it is something that you can utilize I think the entire thinking and framework changes. So it is not that you are going to get rid of the waste, it is something that you are going to use it, you are something going to upcycle it, recycle it and that is the, I think one of the major mindset that is being done. Uh, the government of Maharashtra had uh, signed an MOU with the GIZ and NABAR in which the city wet compost is being turned into a uh, city waste, is being turned into a compost which is certified which is you know facilitated and then given back to the farmers through the NABAR's farmers products organization. So this is a mindset of circular economy, this is a mindset of uh, using it as a resource and not uh, something to get rid of and I think uh, what we are doing with uh, wet waste is also available, it can be done with the, uh, with the in fact the dry waste by way of the material recovery facility as we call it MRF. So I think uh, there has been massive investments that are being committed both by the union government, by the state government as well as the city corporations and we are having over 1000 MRFs being set up and this MRF will again treat the dry, uh, I, I, hate the, I hate to call it as waste, it's a dry resource which is being recycled. The plastic is being, uh, it's, a, it's a solidified petrol, so it's, we have uh, wonderful uses that are being done out of plastic. Aluminium and uh, ca cans that you drink, it's extremely important. So is the glass, so is the paper and so of course is, so is the electric waste. So uh, when we are thinking, uh, we are change of mindset, we are thinking that as a resource, I believe the entire paradigm of uh, engaging with it changes and not what's exactly being done through the Swachh Bharat mission for last seven years and I'm sure we'll be seeing impact of this very soon. And another important element is of course the participation of the citizens. So I'm sure with combination of these two, we'll be seeing uh, much cleaner and much uh, solid waste efficient cities in India. I think as far as uh, technology is concerned, uh, the sky is the limit. I mean, you can have multiple applications of all the latest uh, technologies that are coming up. Uh, we, it, it can be the use of the citizen apps, uh, the way we had tried in Thane Smart City called as Digitane. We had connected three and a half lakh uh, registered users there. And uh, on, on that uh, app, we were using the waste management uh, application. Like it was almost like uh, Ola Uber of dry waste. 
So it was just an example, you know, how we could use uh, technology for that. Second, of course, is the mechanical part or the biomechanical part, which goes to the uh, bio CNG creation. So, in fact, uh, we are having a very important project of 1,000 tons of wet waste a day will be turned into bio CNG, which will be procured compulsorily by the petroleum companies. So, you know, we are, we are having an entire new stream of bio CNG, which will be saving the import of costly fossil fuel and also converting this uh, wet waste of a city into a biogas and a fertilizer. So, I think we are tr really trying to get the circular economy framework into the place as far as the uh, uh, waste and uh, other use of technology is concerned. Technology is not only IT, it's also uh, biochemical, it's also, you know, all the new things which are coming and we should be, we should embrace the technology uh, with open arms because it's our only uh, solution, the only solace that we can have. And finally, climate change adaptation. This, uh, although there is a lot of talk, you know, there's much being said around it, it really isn't happening as fast as it should happen considering the urgency that is required around this particular subject. Uh, what are the issues here, in your opinion, that really needs to be tackled, that you know, one really needs to look at very closely? I think the very fact that we are talking is the most important thing, because we are prioritizing it. We are uh, sharing that concern within the sections of community. We are communicating with the citizens, and therefore talking, I believe, is one of the most important starting points that one can have. <coughs> Regarding climate, I believe two major initiatives are being taken uh, right from the union government. As we know, in COP26, we had the Panchamrit, which was uh, declared by the Honorable Prime Minister, which was, uh, which was included, including, of course, was the reducing of the carbon intensity of the economy by 45%, uh, 500 uh, gigawatts of uh, non-fossil energy, then, of course, 50% uh, uh, mix of uh, renewable energy. I think these are great initiatives you know, and we are taking up the commitments and again the net zero uh, by 2070 for a country of 1.4 billion or 1.5 or 6 billion it might happen by 2070 is going to be a huge task. So it is a mammoth organization, it is a subcontinent that we are looking at and therefore having time I believe is, is, is a part of process so I, I won't be uh, concerned about that. And again, uh, I believe another initiative by the government of India, the Honorable Prime Minister also declared, was of the life, that is lifestyle for environment. There are almost 11 verticals and 75 behavioral changes that are to be done by, by each of us. And if 1 billion of us are going to adopt that uh, 75 behavioral changes, the cumulative impact it can have is going to be phenomenal. And it's just not for India, it is India-led mass mobilization of all the countries of the world. So, Hopefully, we can find at least uh, two-thirds of the humanity being uh, communicated by this fact that we can change by adopting small behaviors. And I think this is a wonderful thing that's happening. So I'm sure it might take time, but we are on the right course and we should be achieving the critical mass very soon.